guys, my name is Russian Badger, and welcome to Armored Kill, the map pack that is still very fun even when you're sick. I think a lot of you can already tell that I am sick, but unfortunately for you guys, I think a lot of you are familiar with how I get sick as well. You guys know that I start out with sort of the Batman stage, you know, where's Rachel and everything else, so I sound like Batman in the initial stages, and then midway through, you know, I'm coughing a lot, and I've got a really runny nose, and all that sticky stuff is coming out like Spider-Man's web, so I just, I regard it as somewhat of a Spider-Man stage. And the final stage is the Squidward stage, which I sound like right now, you know, where I sound like Squidward, I'm rather sluggish with my thoughts, I work at the Krusty Krab, and I live beside a gentleman that lives in a pineapple and a guy that lives under a rock. So, Squidward's got such a terrible life. You, you live next to a sponge and a starfish, how bad could it be? And okay, I get one gentleman, and now look at this, this is not camping, alright? I turn off my laser and I'm just saying, if I'm going to shoot this guy in the face, I'm at least not going to blind him before he dies. It's, I, I'm sure that's going through that guy's mind as well. It's like, bro, you know what? If you're going to shoot me in the face, just don't blind me before you do it. It's, I know it's kind of inconsiderate to, to sort of blind somebody before they die, but it, it's just not something that I want to be a part of. It's really terrible if you ask me. I'm going to kill him anyways. The UMP-45 at close range now dunks pretty much everybody. Uh, one and two I'm gonna get there just because it's so... You guys realize that the max the max damage which is done at close range, you know, that minimum that minimum distance, I believe it's it's something around 8 to 10 meters, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's different for the PDWs, but it's 34 damage now instead of 25. So you just destroy people with three bullets, that's all you need. But, as DICE emphasized, it really, really falls off at range. It really, really does. And... I'm going to edit this footage down just a little bit because, oh, okay, I'll talk about game modes and so forth, but I definitely think Conquest is much better for Armor Kill. Rush just doesn't, I don't, I don't think they put enough thought into Rush, and it's just, you have, okay, Rush can be very fun on Armor Kill, but you have to have a perfect concoction of different variables on the map to make it anywhere close to being like a desirable game mode to play, and I, I kid you not, it is only fun under certain conditions, so... Uh, and I'll, obviously I've got a lot of running around here, so... And this guy! You didn't get signature confirmation! What can Brown do for you? I think that... I think Brown can make you do a backflip, or whatever, whatever that guy just did, but... I have to say that... I definitely think that Conquest is a lot more fun on our kill. It seems like that's what it's designed for. I haven't really played the other game modes too extensively, such as the tank superiority and all that. But I tried Rush Out for quite a while, and it is just... I think 48 man is perfect. In my opinion, I think 48 man is perfect. I think 32, you just steamroll the other team no matter what because the AC-130 just completely overpowers everybody else. I think 64 man is just a fuster cluck of, no, oh, there's a guy, let's all shoot him in the face. It's it's like everybody is looking at you as soon as you pop your head up. I think six, well, 64 man rush in general is just not a good idea. I think the only people in 64 play to rush are people that are looking for massive montage clips or just stat padding. I don't know what the deal there is, but... I still don't think that 64-man rush is even a, even close to appropriate on armored kill. I can easily say 48-man is probably the best, but at the same time, you're like, Badger, you're such a catfish, nobody actually has 48-man servers. I've only played in one or two that are offered, but for the most part, you're not going to find very many. And that guy, you can tell. Like, I jumped there, my hip fire was completely terrible, but still, three shots with the UMP at close range, it is just deadly. And that's why I'm using it. Oftentimes in Arbor Kill, you will see a gentleman and you will not have the ability to kill him. He is so far away. It's sort of a frustrating concept. I'm sure you've probably experienced it on Caspian Border and so forth. And this hole is perfect hiding spot. Like, I can't think of a better hiding spot. And yet again, this guy. Okay, if you're going to ship with FedEx, make sure you get signature confirmation because he doesn't even have to sign. I can just drop it out his front door and skadoosh then. Yet again, it just... It's not a good idea to not get signature confirmation, and that's just what happens every single time. But what I was going to say about the UMP is, it's perfect for what you need when you're using C4, because oftentimes the guys on these maps are too far away to kill you. It doesn't matter how good their accuracy are, the damage drop-off is so significant, they have to hit you with like an entire magazine to kill you, and I want to... Oh, false alarm, I'll just shoot you in the buttocks, that's, that's fine. It's... It's not really a difference to me. I mean, you died either way, and this guy gets it too. Thanks for the ride, bro. That's 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 just wonderful. I always feel like a trucker in this. It's I don't know. Feeling driving this thing around, it's it's just awkward. You guys see later on too. I get in this thing, and it's just I have no idea what I'm doing. 
It's just... It's awkward to use because I don't quite get the reticle. I don't get the reticle at all. <coughs> Excuse me, I am I'm sick, by the way, but... I don't get the reticle. I don't get exactly... I think, for the most part, in Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3, with the grenade launcher, right? You roughly got an idea about where your grenade would land once you fired it, but this is just... It's just a crab shoot, if you ask me. It's just... I just, I, I don't get it. Like, I just don't understand exactly how it works. And, uh, sure, I don't know what the deal was with this other team. They were extremely generous. Like, every every vehicle that I want, I'm going to try that out. Uh, feel free to get out. A vehicle, okay, this vehicle could easily have broken up and just destroyed my semi-truck or whatever that huge artillery machine is. But for some reason, he decided to get out and... I don't know if he was just being generous, like, here, take mine! Oh, I don't need this tank. My team isn't going to win anyways. It's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's not really a big deal. But I would still like to discuss a few other things today, like the AC-130 and so forth, especially how it interacts with the different game modes. But as you can see here, I just can't kill anything because I have no other attachments. I don't have the cancer shell. I don't have any kind of semi-auto secondary for this. I don't have anything. And I thought... That guy's at my rear, and he's probably one tank shell, maybe two tank shells away. I just didn't even want to fool around with it. Also, too, I want to talk about the support class and why I think if you're running individually, it's much more effective to use it. And it's just because it's higher risk, but it's higher reward. You guys get that. You have C4, which can easily blow up a tank with one of your, like, one right click. Or actually, it's left click. No, it's, it's left click. Yeah, it's left click. So I can take it down here, but... It's high risk, high reward. You're running the risk of getting run over. It's really hard to navigate around. Well, I wouldn't say in this particular case, but it's the you run the risk of getting shot in the face by the tank because you have to get super close. You have to navigate around his field of view and make sure that you don't get seen by any of his allies. But then again, all you got to do is squeeze your little compression trigger and he's gone. But, you know, you run the risk of dying. It's very, very large. And it, the wall's everywhere. You can't cut them down. You just need C4. It's just convenient to have. And this sort of support argument that I'm talking about here, in contrast to... <coughs> contrasting that between the engineer... Yeah, the engineer... You can definitely engage and do damage to tanks at a safe distance or far away, but it takes you like seven or eight shells, and the guy's probably going to jump out and run away before you actually blow him up while he's still inside of his tank. So... C4, I think, is just better if you're running around as a lone wolf like I do. But if you have four engineers all going for a tank, he's going to go down pretty quickly. So it really depends on what you want. But still, C4 is extremely effective for just by yourself making a huge difference. At least that's what I think. And like I was saying with the UMP45, it's perfect for what I'm using with C4 because I don't really need to kill people at long distances. It's not a necessary requirement. Oftentimes tanks will do that work for you the longer distances with cancer shells and so forth. You just need to focus on staying alive. And the majority of the time when you die is little instances like this where it's really close quarters and he just overpowers you because he has a higher rate of fire, more damage, whatever. Very few guns be the UMP45 now. Just because of that 34 damage at close range. I mean, obviously it drops off at longer ranges too, but that's not what I need. I don't need long range damage on this thing. I just need it to keep me alive in close quarters so that I can continue to C4 whatever I want. And that's, I I thought my hip fire was good enough to kill him there and I thought the tank would save me too, but it's not even a big deal at this point. It, I mean, obviously you got taken down there. I believe you got the flag. And at this point, we've shoved them back. I believe the bridge is the only place that they can enter from. And the AC-130, if you can see that top flag, I believe it's the B flag, if I'm not mistaken. Or that upper flag, you can see it on your screen right now. That AC-130 is just going to destroy anybody on that flag anyways. So, it wasn't really a huge deal to me. And if you can get this final base to the repair shop, it's right next to the bridge. And I was going to say something like, oh, getting spawn trapped in Battlefield 3, it's like water under the bridge. Because I'm currently in water under the bridge. And I was like, uh... That's not a good idea. I don't I don't know what you guys think about when you hear water under the bridge, but I always think of that Far Cry. I don't know if you have has ever seen that, that promotional video, but you know the guy with the definition of insanity? Have I told you the definition of insanity? You know, doing the exact same thing over and over and over again, expecting things to change. And this guy thought that being out of bounds would save you. What can Brown do for you? And it can get your tank blown up because... The out of bounds is not going to save you, man, especially when you're in a vulnerable position like this. And it's just, yet again, the power of one person with C4 to destroy lots of vehicles is 
extremely influential in the match, and this is a perfect lurk spot. Lurking around this bridge, you have plenty of rocks, you got the water, you got all these different places you can hide. I sort of was questioning knifing that guy, but I said, you know what, not even worth it. And this guy's already on fire. I just said, oh man, signature confirmation you're gonna get? No, no, he already, he already exploded. This guy, I did not understand. I, I genuinely didn't understand how he got there. And you think you can run me? Nope, nope, nope. That's not gonna work. Just read like a book. Read like a book. He's obviously jihadding something. He's put C4 on the front of his quad or front of his car or whatever. <coughs> I got one more gentleman there. It's so obvious what he's about to do. He's gonna try to run me over. Look at the bush monster. How did he get there? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know for like a half second. How did he get there? I don't know if he was lurking there for an extended period of time or what, but nobody got past me on that bridge. I just didn't understand it. And it's one of the, those ones here. You know where Carl comes around? It's like, Carl, what was your what was your reasoning here? Uh, were you trying to... I, I just don't get it. Anytime that your car comes to a stop... I, I think people have this misconception, and I get another gentleman there. People have this misconception that while they're moving in those cars or quads, whatever, they're invincible. No, you can easily get shot in the face with bullets. People don't even need RPGs and so forth to kill you. They can just shoot you out. It's the easiest way to do it, especially when you're going very slow or when you stop like that guy. When you stop and you're in the driver's seat of a car, you're going to have a bad time and you're going to get shot in the face. It's really, really simple. And... As you can definitely tell, I'm using the blue camo, or the navy camo, on the UMP-45 because that makes so much sense. That's, uh, this map is filled with lush green hills, let's go ahead with the blue camo. That sounds, that sounds off, but I think I will still talk about the AC-130 a little bit later. Simply because in this guy, I, I don't think you're allowed to cross the river. That's, that's not, it's not allowed. That's not allowed. But I think I'll talk, I'll talk about the AC-130 once I, I get in it a little bit later in this match. But it is just, so many times, it feels like you're just not having an effect. Especially when you have this many flags capped. Actually, I'll talk about that later. But oftentimes it's just, at least in Rush, if you ask me, the AC-130 is just, everybody is waiting for it. That's like, okay, we've got 16 people on our team. Why do I only see 5 people on the map? Oh, maybe the other 11 are just waiting for the AC-130. That's going to go down in a few seconds. And I'll discuss that dynamic right now, excuse me. <coughs> oh god, I'm like coughing up a lung. But I just wanted to say, okay. Yeah, so a lot of people, okay, this guy. Okay, so that wasn't exactly a stab. I don't know why the animation is not working. And yes, okay, I got my teammate killed and I get this other car. Nice one, Carl. Th thanks for the 12 kill streak. Yeah, he knifed my teammate, but at this point in the game, oh, okay. I was being okay. I was being selfish. I went for the knife, and that got my teammate killed. He got knifed, so it's my fault that he got knifed. But at the same time, it's like we have the other team quad capped, and no, no running on the stairs. That's that's uh, that's out of bounds. That's not allowed. But I wanted to say, okay, and death from above. I just jumped the go ninja, go ninja, go, and that guy just gets destroyed. And this other guy over here, he thought he was gonna get me. I went in with 79% health too, and he. He still just didn't capitalize. Just still. Still didn't capitalize. I would think, I mean, oftentimes if I go in with anything less than 100%, I expect to die. I just go in and, uh, you know what? I have less than 100 health. If I get out of this not alive, if I die in this engagement, I'm not really disappointed because I know it was an, an inherent disadvantage, but right there. Living with 1% health just because the UMP-45 is so dandy at close quarters. It's just, it's so deadly. And I'm glad they buffed it because it was pretty much useless previously. But I wanted to say, this is oftentimes the dynamic, at least with Rush, with the AC-130, okay? This is what it's like. Okay, you're in time. Okay, let's say on defense, all right? On defense. Everybody's thinking about the AC- Oh man, AC-130, bro, isn't that- Yeah, everybody's thinking of the kill streaks and- Yeah, enemy, enemy AC-130 above. All those things are ringing in people's ears, right? So everybody on your team goes engineer, and everybody grabs their iglas, right? And then the AC-130 goes down in like 15 seconds after it spawns, okay? Well, after flares and everything else, but I'm a little bit exaggerating there, but you know what I'm saying. It goes down very, very quickly, right? But then all the tanks come, and all the armor comes, that's not airborne, and you have nothing to blow it up with. You have no RPGs because everybody on your team went IGLA, and it's just stupid, it's just silly. 
I mean, yeah, you got guys with C4, but especially on Rush, it's one versus the other on one side of the map versus another side of the map. It's much harder to do that in Rush, if you ask me, because you're sort of expected to be hitting and running towards a tank with C4 from a certain direction, and he ended my 15 kill streak. But I can easily say, it's just, it's something that is so funny to me, because people just don't have the, the train of thought to think, okay, maybe we might want to break up our Iglas and our RPGs, maybe that's a good idea. But then on Rush, everybody's thinking, no, I see 130, bro, I gotta take it down. No, I, I gotta take it down, bro. Everybody goes Igla, armor comes, destroys you, and you get raffle stomped, and you literally lose the game in less than 10 minutes. That's what a lot, oftentimes the rush is like. And okay, here in the AC-130, this is what I feel like. The rest of my team is out winning the game, and I'm still masturbating in the AC-130 doing nothing. That's exactly how I feel. Because, I mean, obviously... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so you guys know that obviously... The AC-130 is on rails, right? Per se, it's on rails. Nobody's controlling it. You're not controlling the flight plan. So we have all these other bases capped, and I'm firing at things that are like two miles away. I'm not very effective. Number one, in this particular gunner seat or whatever that seat I'm in, you're not going to be able to hit things at very, very far or hit things very, very far away at longer distances simply because it's unpredictable. You don't know if the tank's going to go to his left, go to his right, go backwards, go forwards. And there's such a time delay, it's pretty difficult to hit, but for the most part, at least in this seat, I'm fairly certain that all you really want to be doing is just making sure that you don't get shot down by a jet or a helicopter like I showed you in the intro. But still, literally, this is what the AC-130 is oftentimes. If your team's good and you've already capped a lot of the flags, yeah, the rest of my team is out winning the game and I'm still masturbating in the AC-130. That's essentially what it's like a lot of the time. And on Rush, it just seems like if people know what they're doing, and I guess to a certain extent you protect, you protect the AC-130, it's it's fairly easy just to destroy a team, but still I would say that 32 man. On 64 and 48, the AC-130 goes down pretty quickly, but I guess there's a lot of different situations and a lot of different variables in terms of, you know, do they have a, a soft them up, do they, how many javelins do they have, who's running IGLA, is your entire team running IGLAs, is your entire team running RPGs, I think the best mix is probably around half and half, but I just cut the game here just because it was literally just me running around. I just ran around, I think I got one or two more kills and died twice more because all I was doing was 360 C4 quads that were trying to run me over. It was really not all that eventful, but I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I still have a lot of armored kill to sink my teeth into. I want, I want to talk about this a lot more just because I don't think I have an all-encompassing experience that will cover all the bases. Like, I think, you know, when you first get a map pack, you have first impressions when you first play your first couple games, like, oh, close quarters completely sucks, because all you do is just die, 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 but then you play it more, and you realize that you have to play in a certain fashion for it to be really fun. So, I don't think necessarily first impressions are always the correct impressions. But I'll get more gameplay for you guys next week. I hope you guys tolerated my sickness as much as I did. So, I'll see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later.